ladies and gentlemen, my name is Will Scott with Biz Design. It's my very great pleasure to welcome you all to today's Tech Talk. We'll be talking all about designing the better solutions by connecting solution architecture to enterprise architecture. Today, it's my very great pleasure to be joined by Matthias Scholten, who's a Product and Innovation Manager at Biz Design, and he's going to be giving us a great demonstration and talk today. Before we go into that, just a couple of housekeeping notes. One, this session will be recorded and we'll send that out about 24 hours after the session if you want to review the material or indeed share it with your colleagues. And secondly, we will be taking questions. So please submit questions as they occur to you. And if you can do that via the Q&A panel, that will be fantastic. So thanks very much for your time. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Matthias. Matthias, over to you. Yes, Will. Thanks and uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for uh, for joining here. Um, Will, can you hear me? Okay. I can. Yes. Excellent. I can hear you fine. Okay. Then we can start. Um, good afternoon, morning. Uh, Matthijs Scholten, Product and Innovation Manager at Biz Design. I'm responsible for our product vision and our product roadmap. Excited to to join you today for this webinar on designing better solutions. Um, I have a background as a consultant in uh, enterprise transformation. Um, I'm very you know, keen on uh, communicating visually and um, yeah, proud to be building this design's uh, platform horizon. So today uh, we're going to talk about uh, solution architecture. We're going to talk about design. And uh, the vision behind all of this is that we at this design believe in change by design. So with our platform horizon, we help our customers to see the full picture, to build, build a good information position, um, to think about change, to discuss change, and to make decisions about change. And with that picture, with that information, um, you have the foundation to think about all kinds of scenarios of changing your organization, finding the right path, and then also being able to change the organization according to your plans, according to your ambition. And before we go into uh, more detailed content around uh, solution architecture and the ins and outs. Um, yeah, a, a couple of numbers to motivate also uh, this webinar. I think it's really important um, that we talk about designing better solutions because if you look at the investments organizations are making in digital transformation and changing and transforming the organization, that's just huge. The ex investments are only accelerating. Um, the numbers now being uh, recently released there was a number of 16.5% compound annual growth rate on investment in digital transformation initiatives. Um, and that's, a, again, a 1% or 2% raise according to last year. So this growth rate is already at an all-time uh, all time high. Next to that, there was a nice uh, post-COVID kind of survey uh, among business executives. And 97% of executives indicated that they experienced an increased speed of transformation and transformation initiatives. And with all of that you know, speed and all of that money being thrown at transformation in our you know, large enterprises, yeah, the success rate is still not, um, I would say, at a level that we would wish it to be. Um, you know, there's research out there that shows that roughly 70% of change initiatives is not delivering on its initial ambition. And why is that? Well, obviously, it's because... Uh, I think design is still a challenging area for a lot of organizations, but it's also because organizations are currently not designed for digital. Uh, I think many organizations uh, look like this. If you would have a, have a closer look, if you would even be able to create this picture, to construct this picture. And of course, that's also a challenge and it poses an extra problem for anyone wanting to, to change something, to improve something, to achieve a business outcome, to improve the customer experience, to optimize operations, to manage risk and to advance their strategy. Um, so that's a challenge. And um, that brings us to today. Um, I think it's yeah important and a good timing to, to, to have this webinar because over the last few months, I've talked a lot you know, to solution architects of all sorts. Uh, we have a you know, broad variety of customers uh, already using our platform for solution architecture today. And uh, we see a growth in, the, in, 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 this, in this user group, in this group of architects. And they are architects of all sorts. Um, so with you know all the talks and all the conversations and workshop I've been in, um, I've made some calculations and I've had a, a access to at least a group of thousand solution architects. So I'm keen to share some insight uh, from this group, from the field. Um, so there are solution architects of all sorts, uh, whether, and I also see that a lot of people uh, with a solution architecture job title actually joined this webinar. 
But there's also people with uh, job titles like technical architect, network architect, infrastructure architect, security architect, cloud architect, um, or maybe specific uh, domain, uh, some, some kind of domain architect. So it's this large group of architects, of business designers that I want to speak to today. So hopefully um, this is insightful and, and useful for you as well to see how you can design better solutions. Um, so first things first, and yeah, let's not take this for granted, um, just mapping out the job of a, of a solution architect, whether you're yeah, one of those, uh, whether you're actually call yourself a solution architect or you just identify with this, uh, with this work, uh, I think it's important to pause and uh, think about this role uh, before we go into any, any, anything else. So when you look at the solution architect, um, his or her job, um, I would say it can be distilled into four main areas of, of work. Um, it's obviously do, about doing design work, uh, as you can see from uh, several stickies here. It's about uh, a solution architect that designs new solutions, new solution for maybe a business domain. Uh, maybe you're in, I don't know, you're in logistics and you need to design a new order management platform and that's your focus. Um, it's also a lot about maintaining existing solutions, upgrading systems, or, you know, migrating, replatforming, and being in control of that. And that's where your focus is at. And then, of course, you need to make sure that you assess the risks and uh, of, of, of a certain solution, right? You're, you're working on questions like, how much technical debt are we willing to take um, if it has a certain impact on our time to market? Maybe you're behind the development and launch of a new product or a new service, then yeah, you're bringing this news, you're looking into the details of change and you're bringing this news to decision makers. Um, and obviously you need to communicate your work. You need to communicate it with, uh, whether it's an architecture review board, whether it's um, development teams that are implementing um, your solutions, whether it's more business focused stakeholders that are uh, the motivation behind a certain solution. You need to make sure that your designs, your, the architectures that you create are fit for purpose. And that's why you need to have some collaboration around that. So that's, I would say, the core, uh, bringing, bringing the job of the solution architect to the core. Obviously, there is some you know, pains coming with the job. There's frustrations, there's challenges in achieving that. But there's also gains, positive outcomes that you're looking for. So on the pain side, I've, I've really learned a lot that, uh, I really learned that a lot of solution architects, they actually spend a lot of time in meetings and gathering information. Hey, what's the current state for this thing? Um, how do we go from there? What are, some, what are the scenarios that we could work on? You're really dependent often on a lot of stakeholders in the business or in IT um, to collect information that you need. And then also every project can be so new, you might yeah, need to start from scratch with every new project. And uh, it might take a lot of time before you have your deliverables re ready and, and signed off. Uh, there, are, yeah, there are examples from customers that actually take many, many months to yeah, create one solution after the deliverable uh, ready to be to be signed off. And that can be problematic, right? If, the, if there's already teams building software or rolling out new business processes as you speak. Um, and I also found that a lot of you are really looking for a more structured way of working, um, increasing the quality, but also the impact of your deliverables, um, whether it's a, it's a high level contextual kind of design, whether it's more detailed diagrams that show the technicalities of a solution. We're really looking to, uh, to improve that, to improve the ways of working around that. And of course, we all love to be perceived as a great communicator, right? So yeah, how do you go, how do you go about that? And I think it's good to, uh, you know, before we um, share some concrete inspiration, uh, I think it's good to have a look at your environment. And uh, what I tried to do is um, look at two axes. So one is the, the angle of, you know, business and change, um, the vertical axis here. Um, there, there's a lot of stakeholders and organizations preparing the business for change by working on business strategy, right? Uh, moving the business forward, setting goals, um, creating roadmaps. And then there's also stakeholders that are deep into implementation that are responsible for executing change and trying to achieve that, um, that's the strategic change. Then on the horizontal axis, um, you, you might either have a, an enterprise focus, so you might look at the organization as a whole, and that can be you know, the organization with all its business units and subsidiaries, but it can also be, for example, the organization and its ecosystem, its suppliers, uh, vendors, customers. Um, it depends a bit on how you define enterprise, right? That's not what this webinar is about. And then there's the business domain focus, I would say the more detailed focus. So whether you're in a certain business unit or um, a certain team, it, de it, de it depends where your focus is. And try to position a solution architect uh, together with you know many of you actually, um, 
in the right uh, right hand side of this spectrum. So often solution architects are focused on a certain business domain, and often they focus um, yeah they focus on change. So uh, there's already some drivers for change projects or change initiatives have already been defined and it's also about hey how are we going to design this change how are we going to make this change happen how are we going to collect all the information needed for a successful change and then there's a couple of i would say stakeholders around you in your change bubble or sorry in your design bubble there's other architects so i'm just calling here calling it here domain architects but this could be you know business architects data architects application architects integration architects information architects or maybe very business specific architects, like when you're in a big uh, financial organization, maybe it's a payment architect. Um, so there's a quite a group of architects in that sphere here on the right hand side, very business focused and often focused on, on, on change. And of course, these architects, they vary in terms of how strategic they think and act. So that's why this bubble is quite, uh, quite large. Then there's often also a project, uh, sorry, a product owner, a product manager role when it's connected to change. So you might be familiar with this role, um, working in uh, yeah, development teams, working with development teams that are implementing changes. This is often a more business focused role who brings in uh, context, who brings in uh, concrete stuff like user stories, uh, decision making. Um, and you often work with this role on, on scenarios and, and risks and blockers. And of course, I'm uh, managing solutions in a smart way by, uh, for example, reusing existing stuff. Then there's, I would say, a broad category of business stakeholders from all the way from the people in the C-suite who, uh, who steer and guide the company to, I would say, more line management, business management roles that the people that are in charge of a certain department or maybe own a capability, own a value stream, own some process. Um, so these are also roles connected to, I would say, your circle of, of influence. And then, of course, there's a more broader architectural uh, bubble. I would say the broader design bubble. There's an enterprise architect who often works on more, you know, longer term uh, plans, longer term design uh, aspects, uh, working on also more holistic models, often like capability models um, or larger application or, or business landscape. The landscape. So these are all, co all, all connected to your architectural bubble and discipline. Um, and these enterprise architects, they often also span uh, different domains. Um, so they are connected ideally to the business in some way, but they also have a link into implementation, just like you as a solution architect. There's the final bubble that I'm introducing here is the one below, the greenish kind of bubble. It's the implementation bubble, the implementation zone. And I've just you know, tried to numb it down here in two roles, engineering and operations. There's much more. There could be cybersecurity specialists of all sorts, other implementation experts. Could be other variants of engineering operations, DevOps. Um, but what I want to say with this picture is that solution architecture is a Oh, hopefully my audio is okay. I'm getting a message here that my audio was falling away, but I think we're back now. And as you can see, solution architects, they are really wired often in a very diverse network of co-creators, of co-designers. And um, that's what I really want to focus on in this webinar. Like, how does that collaboration work? Um, so hopefully this is a useful picture for you. Um, it is composed also, you know, with, you know, together with you. And I'm yeah, curious to hear your thoughts about these uh, these bubbles because bubbles have a negative kind of connotation you might think hey a bubble that sounds like a silo it sounds like we're not communicating i've seen a lot of examples where these bubbles are you know quite well connected or at least two out of three bubbles are connected but i'm curious for your take on this so uh, to make it a bit interactive i'm organizing a poll here and my question to you in the audience is in which bubble do you think the solution architect can add most value and uh, we're not going to do an open mic session, so I'm going to uh, I'm not going to do that now. I think I don't think there's any with this number of people uh, participating. So I'm going to launch polls. Hopefully this works. My first question is, and then my screen will uh, will drop. I might even use lose the video and audio connection. So bear with me. I'm going to briefly launch a poll just for one minute. In which bubble can the solution architect add most value? There will be three possible answers: the business bubble, the design bubble, or the implementation bubble. So where do you believe the solution architect? can add most value. So I'm launching the poll right now. So hopefully you can answer that one. I see the quick poll showing up here. See that the poll is in progress for at least, or at least only. I already see some results coming in. Very interesting. Yeah. It's shaping up to be a good response rate or is the 80% response rate here? So I'm going to 
We have a couple more seconds here before we close this uh, this first poll. Great, great implementation bubble. Implementation. I'm oh, sorry, I'm just reading out, saying out loud what I'm reading here. <laughs> okay, I have a great response rate, almost 90%. So thanks for that. I'm going to close the poll now. Yep, so we're back. I'm going to share the results of this poll. Um, here we go. Here we go again. Yeah, I think we are looking at it right now. If not, let me know, Will. Uh, but what I'm looking at is here that there's a clear winner, uh, namely that uh, solution architects can add most value to the design bubble. So very low score for implementation, um, relatively moderate score for, for the business bubble. So um, interesting, interesting. So if you look back at this uh, slide I presented, and I will hide the results again of this poll. We're doing one more poll later. I'm going back to my slide here. Um, I think that makes sense. As you can see that the, the design bubble is uh, very, very big and, and comprehensive and wide. There's a lot of depth also in their interaction with other roles, uh, especially business roles. So, um, okay, I'm really going to work with that uh, going forward. Thanks for uh, for your replies there. Um, so yeah, still 70% um, failure rate of change initiatives. How can we turn this around? Um, and I think it's important that we are from, you know, that we get um, comfortable with the definition of solution architecture as a golden thread for change. Uh, I really believe that uh, design uh, plays uh, um, yeah, a very social role almost in, in change processes by bringing in all the information and communication needed for change. Because this number, the 70% number, one of the leading causes for that is a lack of information and communication. And when you're in the room uh, talking about complex change, there's so many different roles in the room, right? There's IT, there might be operations, HR, all the business departments, different sorts of architects. Um, there's such a large variety of stakeholders uh, involved that you really need to have a good information base to base your decisions on. So what do we propose? What do we believe in at, at BizDesign? Uh, we believe that a model-based approach, a model-based approach for your design work can really beat the odds here, that can really you know, turn this 70% failure rate number around. And, to illustrate that, um, before we show a, a demo on how a solution architecture journey looks like in our platform, Busy Design Horizon, I want to want to want to have a look at that. So I've um, created a simple diagram here on the left, on the on the on the vertical side. It's about inclusiveness of design deliverables. So anything you create as a business designer, communicating with others, creating it with others. So is it is it very accessible? Is it, is it, has it does it have a shared meaning? Or is it very accurate and it's very, you know, uh, method methodical? And just to illustrate that, um, I'm going to give a couple of examples. So, on the, on the one hand, you might create, you know, almost like free format whiteboard sketches to map out a complex system. On the other hand, you might, you know, create a very, very detailed, um, almost impenetrable <laughs> model in UML, unified modeling language, or maybe another language, modeling language of your choice, or maybe no modeling language, but at a very accurate, very, you know, high level of detail. And there's a lot of stuff in between. So uh, you could be working on user stories that, you know, you, for example, you, you do that together with business stakeholders or um, product owners, engineers, uh, customer journey maps to design new customer experiences, um, business model canvases, operating model canvases, high level models of how businesses work and how they create and capture value. Um, or more, you know, a bit more detailed uh, architectural kind of pictures where you design architectures and Archimate or you know, processes at BPMN or data models in, an entity relationship model. So it's a rich spectrum. And I think with this design, we're trying to bring, to bring uh, the best of those worlds together, um, trying to simplify your design journey uh, while we actually involve more people, more roles, more stakeholders in the information that you create. Um, and to, uh, to illustrate that, um, you know, we implement uh, coaches, recipes into our platform that help you go through a design cycle, a design and change cycle. So these three bubbles that we just saw, we kind of translate them to, um, to your actual work uh, as a solution architect. So I'm going to share a brief demo of our platform and the demo will take you through a journey of an actual solution architecture, um, yeah, a day in the life of a solution architect. And um, what, what's very important there is that uh, the solution architect uses a central repository of information, reuses a lot of information, at the start of every project, it's very clear what's the environment, what's the architecture that I'm working on, what's the baseline structure that we have in place. 
So that can save you a lot of time. Every model, every design that you create, create is connected. So it's all linked up, it's all wired up. So you can quickly you know, connect the dots across different models and combine insights. Um, that can be used for impact and scenario analysis. You're not creating some loosely connected drawings that are stored in some file share. Um, everything is connected, so uh, you can just query the data in any way you like, and wrangle and slice the dice, slice and dice the data to present it to stakeholders and present different scenarios. For example, on time to market, on technical debt, or all kinds of risks. And then last but not least, we're working on offering more, um, you know, uh, more out of the box templates and design patterns for solution architecture. So we're already providing these, but this is growing, and this is also something where our customers are can actively contribute to. So, um, without further ado, let's have a let's uh, let's have a look at that um, guided solution architecture design with Business and Horizon. I have a great quote from one of our customers uh, who I was talking to last week, and uh, they were really stuck and with you know designing large solution architecture design documents, hundred plus pages, sometimes in PowerPoint, sometimes in all kinds of you know docs. Um, didn't work for them. No one actually read it. This architecture board was a, was you know, was just a drama. Hundreds of pages. No one was no one was using it. Uh, we worked with them and we created seven dynamic views that people could, you know, basically consume, share, uh, and reuse across the board. So I'm hoping that uh, this aspect will also um, resonate when I uh, offer you with a short uh, demo. So let's have a look at um, this design horizon and how that works in practice. And then I have to switch uh, switch screens here. Whoops, going to the right screen. Whoops. Yep. So this is our platform, Business Design Horizon, and after login, this might be what you're seeing as a solution architect. Uh, there might be several projects that you're working on using this coach, this three-step coach. Um, so let's have a look at an example project here. In this project, you're a solution architect for uh, a bank, and the bank has all kinds of FinTech and Web3 aspirations. Uh, so they want to be part of this very you know, growing domain of crypto payments, of fast checkout payments. So uh, there's many projects as you can see that you're working on, but the first one you're working on is, is you know bringing a crypto payments product to market. And this coach, as you can as we call it, it offers you with different steps. So this solution architecture coach uh, helps you to define your deliverables upfront. And we have a lot of stories from customers, as, as I said before, that really stripped down their solution arch architecture toolkit to a couple of four deliverables, and then worked with our platform to make that happen. And this is an example of that. So there's a couple of stages here. There, there's understand. Uh, which is more about setting context. So there's the three few points, three views that you create here, a business context view, something with customer journeys, an operating model. Um, so we're going to have a look at, at some of those. There's a design stage where you do more detailed design. And there's an implementation stage where you work on more, I would say, technical, uh, more detailed implementation information. And you also work with other platforms like Confluence, for example, to work there. So I'm going to show you how that works. First things first, um, we're going to, for, uh, to have a look at the understand stage first. So first thing that you're going to work on is a business context view. And this is a view where uh, we've already prepared a very simple template, keeping it simple here, um, where you um, yeah, envision a strategy. So you know, this BizCorp corporation where you work, it, uh, you know, it, it wants to establish the number one digital user experience. I want to increase market share among millennials, be part of this fast checkout domain. Um, so the goal is to bring a new product, a new business product, you know, the crypto payment product to market. And then there's a lot of apps, the green uh, boxes here, already being made part of that transition. So you already have a scope for this change in terms of some key architectural um, uh, aspects to it. So if you then look at the, uh, the crypto payment product, it's not just a drawing that you're looking at, it's actually a multi-dimensional model. So you can explore this in more detail. You can see there it's connected to other aspects like projects and all kinds of business gaps, other plateaus like a target state or a transition state. In this case, it's a target state. And you dive deeper into this goal of the digital user experience that is connected. So you can then explore business goals and see that these goals are also connected to other change initiatives. So in this case, we made an integration with Atlassian's Jira, which is agile work management, agile work management system. And you can see there are several epics, so high level work packages defined. And in this case, it's uh, an epic about uh, next generation customer facing payment services is connected to this goal. So you can already see the dependencies. You can look for you know, conflicts and, and dependencies when you are at the start of, uh, of your project. So you can really understand the scope and context of a, pro of a, of a new product that you're creating. Um, and that, that information can be used in analysis. So now we also connected um, um, this new product to a business capability. 
we can actually see that this payment execution capability is not just connected to this crypto payment product. It's actually used in a lot of other architecture deliverables as well. And one of the high level models that is very important here is the capability map. So what we, uh, what we provide is um, business capability maps uh, that show a business on a page. In this case, you can see the payment execution capability as being just one of the capabilities. So it's a fairly stable business grid um, with information about the context of your change. And yeah, you can yeah, you can browse this, you can look deeper into the several uh, several business domains and use this as a, a good point of departure for conversation and dependencies. So um, yeah, we see this uh, we see this being uh, being used a lot. There's also a lot of metrics often connected to capabilities. For example, uh, high level uh, capability assessment, um, or hey, what's a, what's the target maturity level of our business capabilities? And um, you can see here that uh, activating a color view already results in a very colorful map here that shows that uh, there's a lot of ambition at this organization. The green areas represent capabilities that have a high target maturity. So this payments domain here in the middle, that's an ambitious area. And most of the capabilities, the core capabilities in the middle have been scored, as you see. So back to our journey. Um, it could also be that you're part of a, a customer journey team, a customer experience uh, team. Um, so um, before you want to go into any concrete design, you want to have a look at, hey, which is what is the scope of what is the scope of this of this migration of this big transition? So all these uh, green boxes here below, these are ap business applications, and these applications are connected to plateaus, so uh, current state, uh, transition state, target state, and you can, based on the underlying data, you can quickly create an impact analysis that shows you with the colors highlighted for which state, current, target, and transition these apps are a part of. So you can use that for dependency uh, discussions. So um, yeah, if you then start working on a more business focused change um, initiative, you uh, yeah you might turn to Enterprise Studio or design tool, and you might start working on customer journey maps like these, where you show that the new payments journey with Ethereum crypto wallets is actually uh, enabling payments within 60 seconds for customers. So you might want to design a new app, a crypto wallet app that also offers a new business service. In this case, called a payment execution service. So you design that service as a part of the customer journey map, and this service will show up also later in more detailed designs that are connected. So you give it an extra, you, know, you favor it, you make it an important part of this journey. So going back to that coach, um, there might also be target operating models designed. Either you as a solution architect are a part of that, or your enterprise architects are working on more high level operating models like this. So this is a target operating model for the payments domain that shows the capability, the underlying business processes, the underlying apps, and also the core data um, structures supporting these apps. Um, so then as a solution architect, you can drill down into more detailed solutions like the digital payments platform. And you can say, hey, we need this payment execution service to be part of this design. So with that service now being designed, you can, uh, on the left-hand side, you can now start searching your repository, just reuse that um, in your design. So you basically drag and drop it in your design, and you can see it's actually already connected to another existing service, the payment validation service, and you connect it to a business process um, to make sure that it's part of the design and it's reused. It also means that other solution architects can document and reuse this service. So it immediately becomes available for the entire community of architects in your organization. Going back to the coach here in Enterprise Studio in the design environment, um, you can then start working on more detailed architectures. So in this case, you're working on the actual solution architecture for the BizCorp crypto wallet app. And also here, um, you want to include that service. As you can see, it's a, some kind of controlled environment that you're designing with AWS cloud technology and a couple of other apps. Dragging and dropping the service, which is already connected to the BizCorp crypto wallet app, and makes it ready for design. You then connect it to the actual product that you designed and the repository you know, becomes a bit more multi-dimensional. And you then want to create a design to show how the BizCorp Ethereum exchange app connects to the Ethereum mainnet. Um, for, you know that you need a couple of APIs for that that are already in your catalog, in your API catalog. These APIs are Alchemy, called Alchemy APIs. And you just do a search, um, quickly find the, the API server and the actual REST API, dragging and dropping it um, will already uh, help you to complete your design in no time. So in this case, you complete the design by adding these two API uh, components. So, but then your work is not done. Um, 
you want to include some design patterns, some standards to where the design needs to conform adhere to. So you're going to look at some of the designs that Biz Design has shipped uh, on terms of security objective and controls. You want to implement some access control um, uh, in your solution. So there's actually some access control um, aspects that you can bring out of the box. Uh, there's a lot of patterns here, a lot of control objectives, a lot of um, control measures. And your security architect will be really happy if you would make sure that you know by design you implement user access management as a control objective and um, the user registration control measure so you basically make your make it secure by design so you add these elements to your design they're all documented they have a description and they can then be used by others for review so uh, before we do that we're going to add some more design patterns here we're going to add some uh, technology guidelines and development principles to the design. These are also stored in the repository, a central place where they can be reused. So uh, you want to make sure that the free CRM app uses cloud first principles, development principles. So lead developers will know what that means as these standards are widely articulated and, and documented and being made part of this, of this uh, design work. Uh, the payments processing app uh, is, about, is connected to the common use applications uh, development principle. And I think we're going, yeah, we're going to add another one um, uh, on the technology guidelines, more tech focused. Uh, let's say that for um, an, an application that's part of the design here, we want to make sure that you know it's a requirement that there's a designated IT owner for that app. So we connect that to, in this case, the free CRM app. So everything we do is then connected and then stored centrally. So back to Horizon, let's say you log in as a security architect. So we switch roles a bit. You're a security architect and this design has been shared with you. So this same solution architecture that we just saw being created on the canvas in the modeling experience is now being made available to a security architect. And he or she reviews it and sees, hey, there's a couple of control objectives and measures here. There's a control objective in the area of user access management and user registration. They can then um, update some of the properties of this control measure. In this case, there's just two, but you can imagine, you know, um, doing it, implementing it according to your uh, standards and principles. In this case, hey, the architect says, you know, the security architect says, actually, the control control strength needs to be high for this one, and it's actually a must-have uh, part of the of the development of this solution. So in that case, uh, in, in that sense, you really uh, design a fit for purpose, but also secure solution. So this this way, you can really easily include others in the design process and make these designs available, have them for able, able for review, and then uh, get that information into your uh, into your change. So you can also then share it on other platforms. For example, share this on Confluence, embed this in environments where in this case, it's a lot of developers work. For example, also here at BizDesign, a lot of developers work on Confluence. They document features in there. So now we're switching to Confluence. And um, here actually, you're going to embed this horizon view in an HTML macro. Um, let's quickly do that. So there's an HTML macro that we're going to use here. I'm going to copy paste that uh, that um, bit of code that I just copied from Horizon. Then we share a preview and you can see that we've now successfully shared this design on Confluence. And this not only embeds it into environments where more technical, uh, detailed information lives, often more textual information is optimized for that. But it also helps people to then navigate back from this, from this page, directly navigate back to Horizon by just clicking the design brings you back to Horizon, Horizon logs in, and there you go, you can review the design in more detail. So that's more detailed design work. And if you look at another aspect of solution design, it's often about designing information flows, designing data flows. So an important piece of work is creating data flows. And well, in Enterprise Studio, we support that. You can create data flows between different systems. Here you can see me doing that between the Ethereum exchange and the crypto wallet app, and you can see different information, different data flows being, uh, you know, going from A to B. Um, so you document that in, a, I would say, in a quite, a, quite a detailed way. This is just a simple picture, but you can imagine doing this for larger application landscapes. But you might want to discuss that, for example, this external valid payment validation app in the middle is quite important, actually quite vulnerable. And you might want to discuss that with business stakeholders. Um, for that, we also uh, have options that you can basically, basically copy paste uh, a detailed diagram like this, or I would say, a diagram that has a couple of conventions and put it into a more intuitive, accessible uh, form. So in this case, you can uh, create it, turn it into a metro map, like a London style subway metro map. You just copy paste the information and you automatically generate a nicely laid out metro map that shows, if you activate the legend here, that shows the different data transferring from well, station A to station 
H2B. It shows indeed the importance of the external payment validation app, uh, being yeah, needing to be able to process three different types of, of information streams. So that's nice for discussion, and it's interesting to uh, use a metaphor in this case of the metro map to uh, to do that. So this is an example of how we support those uh, aspects uh, out of the box and all, all predefined. So um, going back to that uh, target operating model before we go to the final part of the, this of this design iteration. Um, let me do it. Yeah, let's go back. Going to the target operating model for payments. It brings us almost at the end. And this is very high level design as we saw before. You can drill down into more detailed designs like the digital payments platform. And then you can see there's also a technology perspective to this. There's a green cluster mentioned here at the bottom of this page, an elastic Kubernetes service from uh, AWS. Um, you can also drill down onto, on that level and have more technical designs, um, uh, create more technical designs. So in this case, we create an uh, almost like an infrastructure deployment kind of uh, picture for this digital payments platform in which the payment execution services front and center, but there's also other services supported by this by this EPS cluster. So and that's um, an important part of the final stage of uh, of your design. Um, you also need to design more detailed pictures of how applications work. So if we drill down into this crypto wallet app. We might also design sequence diagrams, design the internal behavior of this app. So in this case, as we support that with UML, there's also other ways to do that. This is just an example of how we design the internal behavior of such an application. The journey is not over yet. There's a couple of implementation work, uh, viewpoints that we still have to go through. Actually, there's just one. We looked at the payments infrastructure. We looked at the sequence diagram to show the internal behavior of the app. Um, there's also data, of course. Data is everywhere. Data is also eternal. It's always there. So we need to work on our data model. In this case, we're going, I'm going to give you an example of a predefined logical data model as an entity relationship diagram. We also support other types of diagrams. And you're going to, for example, connect, um, yeah, enrich this uh, data model uh, with another entity, um, in this case, um, wallet information um, that's also being used here to have customers uh, use the fast crypto checkout payment option. Um, so this is how you design an information model, a data model. And of course, this is all connected to the other models that I've just shown, shown before. So that's quite a, quite a design journey. And uh, going back uh, to Horizon, uh, this basically ends, uh, ends this, uh, this brief demo. Um, yeah, as you can see, you could then hop on another project that you're working on. Maybe you're doing something with artificial intelligence, or maybe you're replatforming another system. You manage these projects from here, and from there you follow the yeah, the design journey that uh, yeah, that basically this design provides. But this coach that I've just shown you is also fully flexible. You can figure it for yourself. You can figure it as a solution architecture practice or a solution architecture guild, and you can talk about you know what the essential set of deliverables would be, and yeah how these can be reviewed. Um, having a real time view on your architecture with this design horizon. So that's the uh, demonstration uh, that we prepared. Um, it's really a recipe for impactful um, solution design, creating more fit for purpose and secure designs, including all the you know, necessary information for all these stakeholders to co-create and co-design from an ar central architecture repository, reuse content across different models, connect models to each other, and then basically use all that as a basis for impact and scenario analysis and implementation of you know, smart templates and design patterns um, so that you can design better solutions. So uh, before we go to Q&A, uh, one more final question. Um, you've already seen some examples here and we're working on this actively. I'm very curious if, you, if it's about creating architecture content, solution architecture content, um, which framework should we support? We already support a couple of those. Um, and I'm just curious for you, for your opinion here. So I've made another poll, a second poll, that I'm now going to launch. I'm curious for your response. So I'm going to launch it now and I think it will pop up now. A couple of examples here. Um, so, if it is it in the area of reference architectures, like industry or industry specific architectures, organizational and architectures, or, or architectures of large vendors, I don't know, Salesforce architecture, um, solution architecture methods like C4 for software architecture, uh, ARC42, which is also quite a comprehensive framework. Um, is it about specific or custom design patterns, like patterns for cloud architectures or integrations, or is it about security? I've just shown in the example of ICO security objectives and controls um, being added. So um, yeah, curious for that. Um, giving you some time here, I see already great response rates again. This, in this case, the results are a bit more varied. So before we close, let's definitely uh, discuss those. 
Now I'll just give it, give it a bit more time. Yeah, it's quite. Yeah, we have a clear winner, but uh, the rest is quite uh, quite close. So see still some votes coming in here. I will close the poll. It's now running for over a minute, so I will close it in five, four, three, two, one. Closing the poll and sharing the results. So, um, well, relatively clear winner. A specific slash custom design patterns. They are uh, they are most popular. So patterns for the cloud integration, etc. I can also imagine that. I don't know, there's a couple of hundred solution architects in your organization, but there's a lot of best practice patterns, design patterns to share. So that's obviously something uh, you can already take away from this. Um, reference architectures, number two, solution architecture methods, number three, security frameworks, number four. That's very useful input. Uh, thanks uh, thanks for that. We'll definitely have a closer look at, the, at those results. Okay. Um, final part. Hopefully that uh, shows up in the screen. I see that there's, yeah. It works. Q and A. I think I've shown. I've already seen a lot of um, hands raised and, and and questions posed. Try to not to focus on too much on that during the session. Uh, but curious for the the questions uh, that came in. So this is the time uh, I will ask Will to uh, to share some questions. Thanks very much, Matthias, and great job as ever. Yeah, we've got some questions uh, that have come in. Um, you may have covered them, but maybe a little bit more detail. The first question is. Can I use information from external sources to further inform and populate my repository? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The answer is uh, yes. And we also see that uh, happening more and more. Uh, we have, a, have an open API, the Visitian Open API, where you can basically integrate with any system of your choice to yeah, either in, you know, get uh, information in or uh, you know, share information uh, to other systems. Um, there's a lot of examples of uh, like, Configuration management databases, application portfolios um, that that bring information automatically. We're about to launch uh, a service now integration app out of the box, which is also highly anticipated by a lot of customers. Um, so yes, uh, with the Vistian Open API, you can integrate any information source to uh, automate indeed architecture creation. Fantastic. Uh, Stephen asks, I'm a system architect. Where would I put the integration interface specification? And is there a model or language element for that, for documenting interfaces? So what was it called? Uh, where would I put the integration interface specifications? And is there a common model for documenting integration interfaces? Uh, yeah, we have a, yeah, we have a lot of examples uh, from that, from practice. So how you, you design and document integration. So we would have to look at some examples to answer that question. In, in, in the, yeah, with the right level of detail, I'd say. Um, but this is definitely something that belongs into, into a repository. It can either be um, part of the design process, but it can also be integrated from other sources um, by enriching, for example, application objects that are part of the repository, that are part of the application catalog in a repository. So I hope, I hope I understand the question at the right level. I'll definitely get back to Stephen. Um, yeah, and, and we can follow up with you directly, Stephen, as well. Yeah. Um, there is a good question. Can I set the rules on what concepts to use and not use in solution architecture? So I'm guessing this is related to design patterns. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, there's already a lot of out of the, out of the box, like I would say templates or views, as we call them, um, that you can use, for example, uh, views for just application integration diagrams, and they only include the selected number of, of concepts so it's really um, i would say manageable um, and then you can use that as ingredients for your for your design uh, deliverable and um, you can also customize these views you can also say well indeed we have a large practice of solution architects we have a lot of uh, solution architects in our organization we want to unify and standardize and you can also define the conventions together and you know implement that effectuate that into our into our modeling environment Got it. Um, and, and Antonello, I hope I pronounced that correctly, asks a associated question. He said, very nice demo. I agree with him. A very nice demo. Um, but are the patterns that you showed us uh, sort of out of the box or is that just something you showed us today? Is there anything out of the box that people can use? Yes. Yeah, so uh, what I've shown is out of the box is already something we as business provide to can provide to our customers. 
Um, but it's also an area that is very much, I would say, um, in progress. Um, so we already have a lot of content that we are you know, actively sharing with our customer community that can be reused. Um, but we're also, that's also why I posed that second question right here. Uh, we're also um, actively working on uh, providing our customers with more out of the box content and not just yeah, catalogs or lists of information, but especially this multi-dimensional stuff. So these, these patterns, these examples of good design and include them in our product. So I think you can expect a lot more of that uh, in the future. I got it. Sherry asked a question. You mentioned the ServiceNow integration. And um, actually, I'll tell you what, I, I, I want to get through these questions, but I also want to give people a chance to register for our, our upcoming event. So can you just go to that slide and we'll leave it up while we ask the rest of these questions? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So folks, as a quick aside, we have a session, a virtual event coming up on May 12th, uh, which is our Biz Design Connect conference that lasts half a day. And we've got some great speakers from Shell, HP, and T-Mobile. T-Mobile specifically, will be talking about a day in the life of a solution architect at T-Mobile. So here's a QR code. I'm going to leave this up while we continue with the questions. You can also, we'll also send a link out tomorrow when we follow up on this so you'd register, but please come to it. They're always great sessions with a lot of fantastic biz design content. We'll be talking about the ServiceNow integration and other things as well, and also some great customer speakers as well. So I'm just going to leave that up, Matthias, because I've got some more questions here. A good one from Sherry related to the ServiceNow integration, and this might require a follow-up. Um, what is the extent of the ServiceNow integration? Are only services supported or also applications, application portfolio management? Does BizDesign embrace the common service data model version 3 in ServiceNow? Um, well, to start answering the last question of that series of questions, uh, yes. So it's based on the common services data model of ServiceNow. So we basically, yeah. Have a, yeah, support all these concepts Sherry was asking for uh, out of the box. Um, and yeah, very soon we will uh, yeah, start sharing some uh, some product demos to see how that works and how easily you can set up uh, set up the integration with the out of the box mapping. So we basically map the ServiceNow data model to our data model. Um, we already have an out of the box mapping that we uh, yeah that we provide our customers with, and then they can directly use that or modify it to the extent that they have their ServiceNow data model um, design. So um, yeah, answer to all those questions is yes. <laughs> okay, good. We like yes, yes answers to all this. Um, yep. George asked a question here, George. I might ask you to restate this, but does the tool support multiple repos? I think he's talking about repositories. Can you have multiple repositories? Presumably if you're a SI or something like that and you're supporting multiple clients. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there's, there's already examples of that, especially for large organizations or organizations that have federated architectures, they also um, mimic that sometimes in their repository structures. So you can work with different models um, that are synchronized. Um, so yes, we support that. Got it. Good stuff. Depends, yeah, it depends a bit on it depends a bit on your yeah on, on the goal and um, how you want to organize your information. We can of course provide support for that. Got it. Uh, Ronald asks quite a technical question here. Quick one. Are relationships objects of their own? Are they considered objects uh, presumably in the repository? Yeah, yeah, they are also considered objects and they can also be uh, queried and, and searched for. Um, so yeah, these are very important. It's actually all about the relations. Um, so they, they have a very important role in the, in the way we manage architectural information. Yeah, um, so Richard asks a related question. What about organizations that use systems integrators to develop solution architectures? Can this concept be used with external partners that don't use BizDesign or Archimate? So, I guess, how would an enterprise who uses an SI sort of allow the SI to access the power of this design? For yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have a lot of uh, examples of this already with um, SIs or you know, I don't know, consultants, uh, people from other organizations basically joining Horizon, um, at least as a consumer to, to, to consume designs. Um, and they can also actually onboard on the, on the, on the design environment and be part of the, their way of working that has been organized by the organization that works with that with system integrators um, system integrators can also bring they bring in their own architectures um, in that way so they can basically share their well, solution designs uh, on our platform and then start collaborating around that got it um sargon again i hope i'm pronouncing that right sargon asks the sample model you showed the uh, the crypto payments is that something that's out of the box or can that be made available uh if you want to look at it more yeah, I mean, we can share the demo model if needed. Absolutely, we can also do a more detailed uh, demonstration there. It's just an example that we picked 
but yeah, we did uh, put a lot of thinking in there. In that okay. example. So, so, so yeah. not, out, not out of the box, but contact your business design representative and yeah, absolutely. We'll get that, we'll get that yeah. over to you. Um, let me have a look here. Uh, yeah, these sample models, do we have these example models that can be downloaded directly um, so that people can play around them? Now, there's some sample models out of the box, but I don't know, are they downloadable or how, how does that work? Task? Yeah, so we have some example models out of the box, uh, but we're going to add more. Um, so what I've shown today is already available, I would say, on request, uh, but you can expect some of these example models to uh, show up in your, uh, in your modeling options uh, very soon. Got it. And uh, Randeep asks, are there any detailed documentation resources available for solution architects? Presumably that's all in our help files and our services implementation teams can help solution architects. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of information about the product and the way of working and the different uh, applications of the product in this context. We are also working on building the knowledge base here. Um, well, stay tuned because we're also launching our Busy Sign online community soon. And yeah, we're going to onboard a lot of solution architects there that can share their best practices as well. So we have the customer community contribute to that as well, next to our own contribution to this uh, to this practice. I got it. And we should mention, Matthias, that there is a customer community for our customers right now. There's a specific topic on this area. So if you're an existing yeah. customer of Biz Design, and you want to get engaged in that community, again, please contact your Biz Design sales representative and they'll, they'll get you sorted out. Uh, so Soren has got, that's probably the last question we've got time for here, but Soren sure. asked a question. Um, I'm looking to create a design development delivery pipeline based on safe and lean, safe for lean, BN, that's the, the banking. Um, yeah. yeah. And with the tooling being Jira, Biz Design and Digital ML. So do we have integrated solutions for making all these things work together or is that something we've done before? And I guess I know another question we had coming in is, does this all work with Slack as well? So can you talk a little bit about working with the external systems yeah so again we have a very flexible integration setup with our with our open api um, and i don't know jira horizon that's already quite a, a tool chain that we're quite familiar with also using reference model like models like buy-in they can be embedded in for example this coach that i've shown you can basically predefine your deliverables your, your upfront as templates so you can basically show what good look good looks like and then integrate that information also externally i don't know what digital ml is but Probably we, something we can uh, we can look into. When it comes to yeah uh, tools like like Slack or communication yeah communication tools like Slack or, or Teams, almost like instant messaging, direct messaging. Um, I've just I've shown how you can embed content into like a platform like Confluence. You can also embed uh, smartly embed links uh, to use to arise in, in workflows, for example, on Slack. So you can also automate some uh, some workflows uh, where you share designs with others using that. Yeah. Good. And actually, I'll finish with one last question from Sherry that came in. I think you just answered this, but to confirm, how can we publish our models on Confluence in a, in a secure way? Yeah, so um, we created that feature, uh, Secure by Design. So uh, it's embedded in such a way uh, that we also, I think there's some whitelisting involved there. We, we've taken multiple uh, security measures uh, to to make that uh, embedding safe there's also specific options that you need to activate on the horizon side to be able to share that content outside of horizon um, it's also all documented on our support portal support at busytime.com if you look for embedding then you find all the technical details fantastic well matthias thank you so much for your time today as ever a fantastic presentation matthias you're the master of great engaging accessible presentations and uh, i compliment you for that and i'm sure the audience does Thanks. as well there's been lots of nice cool. comments coming in on the chat and i'd like to thank you all the audience for attending today i hope you found this valuable we will be sending out a link to the recording any questions you've got please don't hesitate to contact biz design and we do hope to see you at biz design connect on may 12th it's going to be a great event it's half a day and we're going to have some great speakers, both business design speakers and external speakers. But once again, Matthias, thank you, for your, thank you for your time. And everyone have a fantastic and safe day today. Thanks very much. Cool. Thanks for the interactive webinar all and uh, stay tuned. Until next time.